Okay, so I made this effect uh, recently in Blender where we have a skin that transitions from the default to a nicer skin. So in this case, uh, it's an AWP which goes from the default skin into a dragon lore. So yeah, and there is like a glowing line to signify uh, the transition. So I'm just going to teach you how to do that. I've rendered out an animation with this, so I'm going to put that in the intro. So yeah, uh, let's just start making it. So we'll make a new blend file. We can add in a plane so I can uh, show a bit better how the actual effect works. Uh, so we'll go in and we'll import the op. This is in the tutorial on how to like uh, export game uh, models from CSGO. I'll link a tutorial for doing that in the description. Uh, but yeah, so we'll do this. Uh, you can see here the screencast keys, so you can see what I'm doing with key uh, keyboard shortcuts and stuff. So we have the op, and we have a base here. So I'm going to just bring in an environment texture so we have a bit more ambient light. Uh, this is from Polyhaven, and I will then also make it not to actually visible. We can delete the light, we can leave it on, it's got a bit of a nicer look with it. So, what do we actually want? So, what we want is we want a line which draws from here to here or from here to here, basically. And what we want is a mask which draws in behind it and fills it with white, essentially. So, if we have the line here, all of this part should be filled with white or black. And this part shouldn't be, if you get that. So, basically, we just need to do that. So, how do we do that? Well, you can all be done with a simple shader. So, we go into the shader editor and we'll create a new material for it. We'll also use the op here. So, what do we need? We need a... Uh, let me undo that. We need a coordinate system to work this. So... How would we do that? Well, you already have coordinate systems here. We'll remove the image texture. So you have UV coordinates like this, but UV coordinates won't work with the case of the AWP because if we do this and we look at the UV coordinates, you can see they aren't just universally mapped. There is a UV map for the texturing. So. If we were to import into here an op texture, let's bring in, let's say, the dragon lore or the Gungnir. So the Gungnir here, you can see it matches to the UV map, so that's how the skin works. But if we want to do a line which draws from uh, here to here, you could see that. So for example, if the line is here, it would also be here and it would draw through the scope before it reaches like this point and it wouldn't look nice at all. So uh, what we need is to use a different coordinate system. So in this case you can use generated or you can use object. Generated I think is going to be a bit easier so we'll do that. So you can see it basically already works. It draws from this point here uh, to uh, the end. But we'll simplify it a little bit to make it look a little bit easier and nicer. So, what do we need? We need to... First, let's just show it on the plane. So, what you do is you take the coordinate system. So, the generated coordinates. So, then we will separate the x axes on it. So, we'll take just the y axis. So, we have a nice gradient from 0 to 1. And then what we can do with that is we can uh, recombine it into a vector. So we'll take combine x, y, z and we can plug it into any of the axes really. I'll just leave it on the x axis uh, because that's what I did on the other file. And then what we need to do is we need to turn it into an actual texture. So we'll take in a gradient texture. So now you have it going from 0 to 1 and mapped. So what do we do then? We can take a math node and we can use a greater than node as uh, math operation. And now we can set the specific point we want it to limit from. So if it's one or more, it's black. If it's zero or less, it's all white. And anything in between, 
uh, you get this. So that's basically how we do the mask. Now we can add to that by giving it some nicer effects. So what we can do is we can add a source of randomness to the UV coordinates. So if we set it to linear light and we bring in a texture. So in this case, you can you can do a lot with this. So for the most simple look, we'll just bring in a noise texture and we'll mix it in. So you can see what this does. So we'll just give it an ever so slight tad of it. So we'll bring it even less. We'll make it 0 0.015. We'll change the scale up and we'll give it some more detail. But you really like, there's so much you can do with this. So you can, for example, take a Voronoi and you can then use the Voronoi. You can plug in uh, the Voronoi in here and you get something like this. You can make that a distance to edge Voronoi. And uh, well, that doesn't even look that good right now. But like, oh, that's because that's not plugged in. Yes. So, and you'd get something along the lines of this. Like, really, it's all just whatever you can come up with different textures. So, just experiment with that. But for the purposes of the tutorial, I'm just going to plug in a noise texture. I'm going to make the scale up, and I'm going to make the mix factor here very low. So, like that. Just so that we have a bit more of an interesting look to it. So that's basically how you would do the line. So what we can do now is we can go ahead, we can remove the principal BSDF from there and we can group like this. So we have a group and we'll plug in this value here and we can go here. We can set the uh, node property somewhere. Uh, we can set it here, yeah. So we can set this to position position and we can set its values to be from minus 0 0.1 uh, to uh, 1.1 1 .1. uh, this is just so that um, it's a little bit easier to work with because we have the distortion part so if we set it to 1 or 0, the distortion can still put a little bit of it into it. So that's a little bit easier. So this way we have a nice note here. We can call this mask. So now we have the mask ready. We can just create a line. So we'll duplicate it uh, with Shift-D. Uh, we don't want to use it as a UV coordinate for the other one. Uh, but rather what we want is to... Uh, create an individual group and we'll make it into a line. So now, how would we go about turning this into a line? So the easiest way is to literally just add a second compare node here. So we will use the same value and we will set it to be a less than. So then if we use a mix RGB node here and we do this and we do this and we set it to uh, multiply and we set it to uh, that that'll work then what we can do is we can add in a math node here so what we can do now is we can take the position and we can drag in a second node here and we can plug that into the less than threshold so now if we uh, change this value we can edit the thickness so we can name this thing as thickness and uh, it will have roughly the same. Well, really that's more free, so I'm not gonna limit it. Then after that's done, so now we have the line and we have the mask. So if we plug in a value node here, so we can set the position to be always the same. So you can edit where the line goes and if you have the mask, the mask will draw into the same exact position. So now we can just go into the op here and we can utilize that. So we can remove the coordinate nodes and we can use the principal PSDF again. Then plug in from the groups here, we can use both the line and the mask. So that's uh, the two nodes we want. We'll use another value node here. So we'll set that to the positions both 
Then we need two image textures. So we need an image texture that goes into there. We'll give it uh, some UV coordinates and we'll just import in a texture. So we can go ahead and we can find the op and we can find the texture. So there's a base op and then we will just duplicate that. We will give it a Gungnir texture just because uh, that's a bit easier in this case. So now we take a mix RGB node and we can just do this and we can plug in the mask. So now if we edit this, you can see transition from one to the other. So we can just set that to be this way. So it goes from the barrel uh, on to become the Gungnir. Then, if we use a mix shader node here, uh, you can also use mix shaders instead of a mix RGB for this, but uh, to handle the transition here, if you want to uh, do uh, the separation of shaders, setting some different values for roughness and such. But that has a slight problem to me of, of um, in Eevee, it breaks the shader, but if you're using the Cycles render engine, uh, you can do that, but in Eevee I didn't get it to work, so it's easier to just do it with a mix RGB node. And just, honestly, this looks fine in Eevee, so I haven't used cycles with it. So what we can do is we can plug in the line as the factor for the mix shader. And then what we can do is we can add in an emission texture here. And we'll change the position of this line a little bit so we will set it to be somewhere in the middle here and now you need to edit the thickness down so you can get the thickness to let's say there and we'll set the value of that to five and we'll bring in some bloom so this way you have a nicer transition you can bring in let's say a little blue tone and that looks already quite good and really that's all you need then you can mess around with doing the normal maps uh, as well. So if you have bothered to actually export out the normal maps uh, from the game, you can plug in a normal map here. Uh, set that to normal color as well. And now you have a nice normal map. You can set the strength to about 0.2. One, maybe even 0 0.2 because a normal map, not a bump map. And uh, well, then you'd have to also work with the mask here. So you can set a mix RGB node into here. Uh, use the factor of that. Uh, the mask, you need to use that as the factor for it. And well, you'd you probably want to set this to black and that way you'd have you know no normal map where there shouldn't be a normal map but then if you you'd need to mess around with it honestly you'd probably actually want to have the mix after the normal map but really not the point of this tutorial so uh, i'll just leave it like this so uh, you've got some good effects that you can work with and and like, really, uh, the sky's the limit with this. And it's quite simple to do, so yeah. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. This is really just me experimenting with different stuff I can do on this channel and uh, things I come up with. So I might do more of these, I might not. Really just, you know, if you have some cool ideas, uh, let me know in the comments or on Twitter. Uh, I'll have a link in the description for things like the tutorial and uh, whatever. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching.